when we're talking about copying, what we usually mean is using the optical tools without also constructing or considering the constructions and the, and the surfaces and the forms. So when we say copy, what we really literally mean is that you're literally copying flat shapes and then you're filling them in like a coloring book. That's what we try to discourage when it comes to copying. But a master study, Sargent is constructive, but he's also highly optical. So if you're copying an artist who's optical, you're trying to get the shapes basically and the edges and then the value relationship and then the lines and how he relates those together. So for, for something like this, for example, it is drawn more optically. If I tried to draw this head, but I was going to construct it more sculpturally, I would basically be designing a head because he didn't put the info. He's got some information in, but they're more like clues. Like here, that's a clue that the brow is furrowed, but he hasn't defined the brow. For example, here, this is a clue about the jaw and the parotid, but he's not defining it. So there's actually no way to do anything except for use optical thinking when that's what the master study was doing because it doesn't have that construction there. So if you were to try to construct this, what you would really learn is you would, you would actually be correcting Sargent. So if we were to construct a head here, what we would find is that this eye's in the wrong place. That eye's too low. You see how it's in the wrong place? Do you see it? Look. He's saying the eyes here. Look at that. Don't get me wrong. Sargent's a master. This is why optical methods have their advantages, but you can see the disadvantage. Look at this eye, dude. All right, friends, look. What's going on? Why is the frontal eminence 30% too wide? It's a value study is what it is. But you can see he's not a master of curves in the same way that the old masters were but he's a master of other aspects. What's amazing about this is how strong the graphic read is. And you can see this from a mile away. Immediately, you can see this character's face. Why? Because he's organizing his values very deliberately. But like I was saying the other day when I did that demo, I did that demo of Carlotta's head. The whole point of that is I explained all of rendering in 40 minutes. That's how much information there is. There's not that much to that stuff. You can learn it in 40 minutes. Now, mastering it obviously takes a lot longer. So the, the reason I wanted to kind of summarize it so much is to show that don't let that take up too much of your focus. That's like letting, you know, choosing the brush take up all your focus. It's not that difficult. They're useful tools, but they're shallow. It doesn't take much to make it work. The hard stuff is what ends up taking more of our time because that's like designing the head or designing the pose. There's so many other aspects of it that take a lot of time. It's not the graphic read. The graphic read, any child could learn. And so what makes this work really well is that he's got a strong separation of light and shade and that he's doing it like that edge is softer. This is sharper. This is quite sharp. This is quite sharp. But you see how methodically he is grouping? And then this actually, because it's a lighter object, is passing in a shade with a different value. And the mouth under here is extremely dark because that's occluding value. This works the same reason that posterization works. Do you know what posterization is? A computer can do it with a button. But the difference between a computer doing it and us doing it is that we can design it more. And if something's not working, we can change it. But the reason this illusion works, I'll show you why this illusion works. It's cool that he's going from line into tone. He got that from Rubens and he got that from Holbein. A lot of portrait artists would do that. It's a very showy piece. You know what I mean? This guy would be on YouTube for sure if he was alive today. But look, this is illustration drawing. This is very much like Bill, the way Bill Perkins would do it. This is not that different than how Steve Houston would do it. We're going from line to value. And the value is creating more of a modeling of the surface. So in this, the line is more minimal. What he's saying is that that's less important than that. It's a design thing. The reason it works is because the shapes, the shapes are carefully, the shapes are carefully observed and they are stated clearly. They're well-designed shapes. You see how that works? That's all there is to it. When we see an illusion, our imagination, our brain, there's something called the facial fusiform area at the FFA. Our brain fills in the details. We can all see that as a head, right? Our brains are filling in the details. That's how illustration and, and academic stuff. This is how a lot of art works. It's just that. That's all there is to it. That's what makes the illusion work. But you can have this and have all the surfaces beautifully designed and have it working in 3D and have it move and have it come to life and make it from imagination. 
So we definitely want to know this. This is key. You know, this is like yin yang. But look, it's just this simple idea. You see this idea? That's all it is. And Sargent is truly a master artist, even though he's he doesn't focus on the things that I emphasize as an artist and as a teacher as much. But there's things Sargent couldn't do. He can caricaturize Madame X a little bit, but if you if you put him in an animation pipeline and it's like, okay, we want you to draw Pinocchio, or he wouldn't be able to do it. There's no way. He's amongst the first artists that took traditional drawing and then started applying it more optically. That's why it's so much better than artists who do that today because they still had that training, that lineage. But the optical stuff got out of control. And then that's why now no one can draw as well as Sargent can in an optical way.